This is our two-tier hydroponic system that you're going to build as the part of this project. And this is what it looks like when you're, when you're done with it. It's going to consist of two reservoirs, which are these black bins. They hold about four gallons of water. And on top of each of these reservoirs, you have a piece of acrylic. And in that acrylic are cut 14 holes. And that's where the grow cups go. And that's where your plants are going to grow. And there is one that has a little popper that's going to be on it. And this is going to keep light from getting down into the water because that will hurt the roots. And this can be removed to check the water and also to add water. So we can leave that there. And your kit has two of them because the top and the bottom bins and the growth tray are exactly the same. The only other thing that we have with our bins is inside, you'll see these two wires. One of the wires, the gray one, is to monitor the water temperature. The other one is a little air tube. And it is attached to an air pump. And that's what our grow stone is attached to. So it's going to be putting bubbles into the water. And that's going to keep our water oxygenated so that our plants will be able to grow. And you notice this slides a little bit. And so what we have included in your kit is just a couple of clips that you can hold the acrylic onto the bin. And that will keep it from sliding around. So that's our bins. The other components that you're going to have, you're going to have two lights. These lights are daisy chain, which means that you can plug them into each other. So if one light comes on, the other light will come on. They're going to be controlled by an analog timer, which will automate our light system. Usually you want your lights on about 10 hours a day. You can have them on for as long as 16. Any more than 16, you're wasting electricity. The plants won't use that much light. So we usually recommend about 10 light hours per day. And that means that the whole system for right about 10 hours a day will cost you anywhere from $17 to $20 a month to operate. But you'll get 28 plants out of that per month. The other components that we have is we have two micro bit circuits. One micro bit circuit is going to be controlling the air temperature and monitoring that. And it's going to be able to turn on and off fans. And so if the temperature is too hot around the plants or if it's too humid, you can have the micro bit automatically turn on the fans. And you have a screen that's going to tell you what the temperature is in each of the systems. And the bottom micro bit is going to monitor the water temperature in both systems because it's important that we keep the water below 70 degrees. If it's higher than 70, it's harder for the water to retain the oxygen that we're putting into it with the air bubble. And the very last part that we have is you'll see these two LED strips, is that they're telling us whether something is right with their system or something is wrong with their system. So you can have it programmed where if it turns red, like this top one, that means that the temperature might be too hot in the water temperature or the air temperature is too hot or the temperature in the bottom bin is wrong. And so it gives you a visual picture of whether something is right or not. And that is the entire system as a whole. And what we're going to do over the next little bit is put one together. So when you first unpack your system, the first thing you're going to do is put together the frame. So you want to make sure that you have all of the pieces for the frame. If not, you email us and we can get you a piece that might have gotten left out of the kit. We have color coded all the pieces of aluminum and we've left a little plastic wrap on. You can take it off if you want to. It just keeps the plastic or keeps the aluminum from getting scratched up in transit and things like that. But you can always take it off if you want. And you should have six 24 inch pieces, which are with a purple dot, four 20 inches, which are with a brown dot, four 18, which is a green dot, four little three, three and a half inch pieces, they're with an orange dot. And then you're going to have six 11 and three quarter inch pieces. And these are gonna be with a silver dot. Now these are a little different is you should have four pieces that have holes drilled in the middle and two pieces that are solid, no hole. And these are going to be for the bottom. 
the holes are going to be used for us to be able to attach our lights to the system, which you'll see when we hang them with a J-hook. The other thing you're going to need is four little socks. And these socks are primarily to put on the bottom, just so you don't scratch a floor, and it also makes it easier to scooch the system around. The system is very light. You can easily be, pick it up if you wanted to. Okay, so you're going to have four of those. You're going to have eight four-way pieces. These are all one inch, and notice there's got four um, spots on them for a piece of the aluminum to go. And you're going to have four three-way pieces, and these are for the very tippy top of the system. And so now our next step is to put it all together. And I'll, I've spread out a little bit, so I have a little bit of room to work. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my socks on my small three-inch pieces. And your socks might be slightly different color. It kind of depends on when you purchase them. And the only reason why I'm doing this is so that I don't scratch up a floor. If I do uh, intense hammer knot. Okay. So now, now we're going to put in our first four-piece connector. And you just hold it, just give it a little tap. You don't have to tap them in very hard. They should go right on in. And you're going to do that four times in a row. doesn't matter how you put them on. It will matter here when we put the bottom together that we'll have to make sure everything is facing the right direction. And for right now, you just put them on and hammer them on. Okay? Now, now I've got my three inch pieces attached to my four way connectors. The system is 24 inches long, which means this is where you're going to need our 24 inch piece. And I'm gonna put it on one of the four-way connectors and I like having it where I hammer it to the floor it just makes it a little bit easier and again if the plastic bothers you you can feel free to take it off so I've got one on and I'm going to do the same thing with another one and I'm going to hammer it okay so now I'm going to connect in my other three inch and four-way connectors here it's very important that you get everything facing the same way, right? The sock is facing this way, and you've got one facing toward me right now, and then another one facing toward the camera. So you really want to make sure that it looks symmetrical. Okay. So there's one, and now I want to do exactly the same thing with the other one. And it's worth double checking. And if you happen to put it on wrong, you can actually use another piece of the aluminum and it'll bang right out. Uh, these are basically held in place by friction, um, but they are held in place pretty tightly, so it can be a little bit of a challenge to get off. So now I've got my 24 inch piece, and we know the system is about 12 inches long. Not quite, because we needed to cut a piece so that the bin fits snugly, and that's the 11 and 3 quarter pieces. For the bottom, remember, no hole. So, same structure. Okay. Just put it down flat, put the 11 and 3 quarters piece on one, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing to the other side. Okay. Right, right in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect my other piece. Notice, same thing. Make sure that all the socks are facing the same direction. And you're going to have one four-way piece connector still sticking out, because that's what's going to build the system as you go up. So yeah, you can just rotate it around, give it gentle taps. Sometimes it's easier to tap it, get this one in a little bit, then tap this one, get it in a little bit. And now I've got my bottom. Okay. Now it's basically the same process over and over again. The one thing that you have to pay attention to is the height. So the next level up is going to be 20 inches high. Okay. But what I want to do first, before we start building it up, is I like to make the tiers first. It makes it easier to hammer things in. Now we've got our bottom tier built. Now what we want to do is build the second tier. 
And I like building each of the layers. So what we're going to do is we're going to build the second layer where the bin is going to sit on. And what I like to do is to have my first bin set up so I know that I can put my four-way connectors in right. Because we're going to need this second layer to connect to the bottom layer and to connect to the top. So you want to want to make sure that you put them in right. And one of the ways to know that you've done it is just take a look at your current bottom layer and make sure that you have one connector facing down, one connector facing in, one connector facing up, and it's flat when you look at it. And if you do happen to make a mistake and put it in wrong, it's easy. I've done a lot of mistakes. Is you can just grab another piece of your aluminum and just gently tap it. And you'll begin to see that the piece will come right on out. And once it comes out, you can switch it around and put it right back in. Okay. Now I've got to do my other side. All right. And now I've got to do my other four-sided piece. Oh, I've got to get one. Get that over here. There's my last four-way piece. There we go. Now, this is my second tier, so I'm going to need my two eleven and three quarters, which is silver, which is the hole in the middle. Be sure that when you're looking down on the system, the hole is facing up, because your bolt's going to slide through the hole from above or below. Okay. And what I like to do is put it on, and exactly like before, I like having something where it's flat that I can hammer it on. And then I just give it a little tap. And I give this one a tap, make sure that the hole is facing me when it's doing like this. And again, it's worth double checking to make sure that I've got my hole facing up. And then the last thing that I need to do is I'm going to add in my second tier. Okay. And now let's give it a little tap on both sides. It's kind of tight. And that's going to be my second tier. Right? So it's going to sit on another pin. Now, the last one, we're going to make the top. Now, the top is a little different because it doesn't have another connector layer, so we're going to use these three-way connectors. So again, it's 24 inches, and I've got my four-way connectors. Exactly the same thing. You put them in such that you're going to make a frame around the top. Again, you're making a rectangular box. And again, always double check that you're putting them in right. And how you know that they're right is that they're all facing the same direction. So, hammer. Hammer this one in. Okay. So now I've got my top. And now same thing, I've got my 11 and 3 quarters inch pieces. Again, make sure that the hole is facing up. If you're looking down at it, that you can see the hole. I'm going to tap both of those on. And now we're going to tap in our last 24 inch piece. Again, it's a little easier. And I find just to tap both in. Just a little bit at each time. And always do a quick double check, make sure everything's tight. And you'll want to do that before you put the system together. So now I've got my three layers. Now what I have to do is build it up. And it's always easy to remember the bottom because it's the one that has the feet on it. And uh, we know that this level is going to be 20. That's our brown dot. Right. Just put them on, on all four pieces, and gently tap them in. There we go. 
Now you're going to do the second tier or the second layer. Okay? That's going to be the one with the four connectors, right? Because you're going to have to have something that connects to our 20, and then something's going to connect above. And we've already got this built. That's why I like making the layers first. It just makes it a little bit easier because now once I get them lined up, they'll fit right in. And then I just have to go around and tap them all in. Okay. And again, it's a little easier just to tap them all in a little bit at a time so you don't have weird angles get set up. Now, the next one is going to be my third level tier. And that one is going to use our 18 inch pieces or the green dot. Okay. So we're going to slide up our camera here a little bit. And we're going to put in our 18 inch spots. Okay. So I'm going to gently kind of put them on just a little bit just to hold them in place. Okay. And I'm going to move back here just a little bit. So now we're ready for putting on the top layer. And really all the top layer is doing is giving us a place to hold the light. And this is going to be 18 inches, which is our green dot. So you can put the 18 inch pieces on. And you can push them on just enough to hold them in place. Uh, so you don't have to hammer them all individually and get them all on. So there I've got them. And then I'm just going to tap them all right on them. So now they're nice and tight. And last thing up is my 24 inch piece, which is my top tier. Right, everything should happily line up. Okay. And exactly like before, give everything a tap, start getting everything in. And there is our frame. And so I've got two, two levels, that's where my reservoir is going to be. And double check that your holes are in the right spots that are facing up so that you can put in your J-bolts, which are going to allow your lights to be held in place. So in your kit, you have two pairs of J-bolts. The system is already pre-drilled with the holes and a little J-bolt is just a place where we're gonna have the lights hold into. It's got a little hex nut that we can adjust. So what we're going to do is you're just going to slide the J bolt in from below and just have the hex nut hold it in place. You don't have to get it very tight and you can have it as low or as high as you want. These, once you get these on, they'll never give way. And you're going to have two for the top tier. And you're going to have two for the bottom tier. got a frame complete. The thing that's missing are the lights, which is what we're going to do next. Okay, so in your kit you have two sets of lights. They can be a little bit of a challenge to get out of the box, so I've already unboxed them. They'll have plastic wrap all over them, things like that. And we're using something called P5 lights. They're lights that simulate the sun spectrum. And they're specifically very good for 
leafy vegetables, so kale, spinach, cilantro, basil, things like that. And in the box, you'll have a little cardboard tube that has our lights in it. So just be gentle with these lights. They are a little fragile, and you don't want to break them because they are fluorescents. So you should have four. Okay. Make sure none of them are broken. And, and how you're going to get the lights in your system is you'll see where there's little grooves in your light. You're just going to align the light copper connectors with those little grooves. And you might have to give this little white holder a little bit of a pull outward. You don't have to pull it much, just a very little bit. And that's where your light's going to go. So you'll see the little grooves and you're going to just replace each light in one of those grooves. So you're going to have four lights and then you just give it a little twist and it should be tight. All right, so if you tug on your light, it shouldn't come out. If it's loose, that means you haven't got it tightened yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to do that with all four of these light bulbs and we're going to do exactly the same thing with the second light set. So I've got my first set of lights in and I'm getting my second set out. So again, you're going to pull each one out. You're going to align the copper with the white. And again, if it doesn't go right on in, you can just give this little white connector a little bit of a push and twist, and it should be firm in place. If it still is loose, that means you haven't gotten it tightened, which means that the bulb might fall out. So you want to double check that it really does lock in place. Now these bulbs should last a very long time. We rarely have them burn out. We often have these bulbs last for one, two, sometimes three, four years. Um, but if you do start to see the bulb get black toward the end, that means it's running out of its lifespan. And so what we can do is get you a replacement. Now, your lights come with all of this metal. These are going to be our hangers, and we're going to learn how we're going to use those. So you can tear the little plastic off. And there's a twisty tie. You're going to save this twisty tie. It's going to be useful for our LED light strips. Right, so just untwist your cable and set your twisty tie aside. And do the same thing with the other light set. Sometimes the hardest thing to do is get the twisty ties undone. Now for the top tier to the system, we're going to use these little hangers. They kind of look like little triangles, and we'll see why, because it makes the lights a very nice tight fit, and it holds them nice and snug in place. So let's zoom back up. All right, All right. so one thing to notice with your lights is it's got an outlet on one side, light switches on the other side. I like having the light switches on the side that I'm going to be able to access. So make sure that you put your system in a spot where you can turn on and off the lights. Okay. Now in your light, you'll see there's little holes. What I'm going to do is put my hooks right into those longer strips. Okay. And Sometimes this is easier if you have an extra helper around. So I've got one in. And you can always rest it on your system because the light bulbs are protected because this, the reflector comes down a little bit. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. Now pause and think about where you're going to have your power because you're going to want this cord facing probably the wall and where your power is. So I'm going to have my power probably over there. So I'm going to take my old power cord. Okay. All right. So now pause for a second and make sure that you're going to get your power cord in the right spot as well as your light switches in the right spot. 
So if I had this here, back here is my wall. I'm going to want my switches facing outward. So that's going to decide where it's going to go. And I'm just going to have my light switch right now for my power. It's just going to go right in the middle. Okay. And we'll see where our reservoir isn't doesn't fill the whole space. And you can keep this cable nice and contained inside the system. I'm going to get one of my triangles attached to one side and I'm going to get the other attached to the other side. Okay. Notice it's nice and placed in and it's pretty sweet. It'll, it'll, it'll swing a little bit and you've got this extra weight. So if you want to make sure that it stays level, sometimes a decent strategy is to take your cord and hold it and slide it over and behind and that will help make sure that your lights always stay level. So now we've got to install the bottom light. So we've got our top light installed with these little triangle holders which work really well for the top. But they don't work for the bottom because the reservoir is going to fit here and the reservoir comes down about three inches which is too far for the light to be able to fit comfortably. And we don't want the light resting or hitting the bottom reservoir. So in your kit you also have these short chains who have the ends that have been kind of opened just a little bit so they'll fit right into our light. So in your light, you know, again you've got these rectangular slots, your chain is going to slide right into them and they're going to behave exactly the same as your triangle did before. So there I've got one install and I've got another one and I'm just going to have the other chain installed. Okay. Just right on the other side. Okay. All right. So now I've got my light all ready to be hung. Just make sure, again, remember that you want to make sure that you have your power switches on the same side. So this is the side facing out. So now we just hang it like we did beforehand. Just make sure that if your chain comes out, that you make sure that it's got a firm connection. So there's one going in. And we just hang it just like we did before. And there's my second light. So and if you want your light to be higher, you can shorten this chain and make the light go up a little bit. When your plants are small, this is perfectly fine, but maybe as your plants get bigger, you might want to raise this as much as you can. But make sure that it doesn't hit the bottom reservoir. And you've got your cable for plugging it in. And again, remember, these two lights are daisy chained, which means I can plug this light into this light. And that's what I like to do, I plug the bottom light into the top, because that gets my cord off the floor. It also keeps this light level. And then I can use this light and plug it eventually into my timer, which we'll talk about when we get our system all put together. So now let's install our reservoir bins and the plant beds that our plants are going to fit in. This is bin is going to hold all of our nutrient water. It's also where our water temperature sensor is going to go and our air stone. So these are actually relatively straightforward to install. You just put them right in. They should fit very nice and snug in the system. And notice there's some give here, which is good. So then what you're going to take is you're going to take your grow bed, which is just a piece of acrylic with holes to cut into it. The holes are for our grow cups and that's where our plants are going to sit. And you can decide which side you want to put it on. I'm going to install all of my electronics on the side facing me here. So this is on the left side of the video. So I'm going to have my little hole facing the side where I want my electronics. And it just places right on in. And you do exactly the same thing for the top system. So you got the top. You put the bin right in the top layer. And exactly the same thing. We put our little acrylic on the top. So now we've got our two bins. 
with the acrylic setting in the top. Our next job is to install the air pumps. So our next step is to attach the air pump to the system. The air pump is very important because that's going to allow us to keep the water oxygenated. And what you have in your kit is you have an air pump that's already attached to a female power connector. And it should come pre-wired with a little short wire attached to the pump with a clamp to kind of hold it in place a little bit. And it's going to have a Y splitter because this one pump is going to send air into each reservoir top and bottom and if it is loose just a little bit you can always just take your cables and just put on the tubing tighter so you can just give it a nice little push and now you should have a complete air pump with two tubing that's going to go to different air stones okay. and also in your kit you're going to have your first 3D printed part that you're going to install. This is our 3D print holder. And how it works is you're going to flip it upside down where the uh, wedge faces downward because we've designed it such that the air pump will fit nicely right into it. And this wedge will make sure that the pump doesn't fall off. And now you can just pick a spot to install it. I like putting it somewhere you know, about halfway up the bottom part of the bottom tier. And again, you can put it up here if you wanted to. You also can flip it around and put it on the side if you wanted to do that. So let's put it up here. Now, the trick is getting the air stones inside the reservoir. Because you might have noticed that the air stone is a lot bigger than that little hole. So what you have to do first is slide your air tubing. Try to keep it inside the system. It just makes it easier for the you don't trip on wires and pull wires out and things like that. You just slide the tubing into the little tiny hole and then install your air stone. And then you can put the lid right back on and do exactly the same thing on the bottom. You can slide it in, lift off the acrylic, give it a pull, and then install the air stone. So that's really all there is for just getting the system attached um, together. So that's really all that there is is for getting the air pump attached to the system. The only thing that is left to do is to test it. So then we've got our air pump attached to the system and we've got the air stones and the reservoirs. Now what we need to do is test our air pump to make sure that it works. And so to do that, in your kit you have a cable that is a USB on one side and it's got a power plug on the other side. This connects directly to your air pump. So you can just plug it directly in, plug it directly into the USB port on your system. Again, make sure that the green light is on so that you're getting power. And then you should be able to hear or at least feel the pump vibrating. Right? And if that's the case, that means everything is working fine. Then you can begin to seal up your system a little bit. So the system also comes with these little clamps. And so these clamps are used just to keep the acrylic or the grow bed from sliding around. You'll see that it's a little slippery. And we don't want that to move around on us. So what we do is we just kind of clamp it in place. And the two clamps hold it nice and firmly in place. And if you ever want to take this off, you just unclamp it. And so the pop, top and bottom here both have clamps that will hold it in place. Okay. Now, the other 3D printed part that you have in your kit for the reservoir bin are these little lids. So what these lids are going to do is you can put them in one of the holes in your grow bed. And what that's going to allow you to do is to be able to test the nutrients, add water, without letting light into the system when the um, 
plant isn't in that hole. And so these just sit very nice and tight. So it's really kind of a lid for your system. And it also minimizes evaporation of the water. You could put a plant here if you wanted to, but then you have to pull the plant out to water the system. So we think it's easier if you just use a little stopper. Zero is bottom. Okay. So our next piece of so now what we're going to do is we're going to install our first bit of electronics to monitor our system. The first one we're going to install is going to be a micro bit powered circuit. You know, the micro bit is this little chip that has a program on it that's going to allow us to collect our data from our water temperature sensors and share that data with us on the screen and give us a visual on whether we need to worry about the water temperature with their LED strip. So you should have already wired this up, or if not, this is the first time through to do it. So to put this circuit onto our system, you're going to need our white Grove Shield holder. And again, that's going to hold the shield in place. You're going to need your micro bit, and we can go on ahead and just put the micro bit right on in. Okay. That's going to make sure that our shield is nicely held firmly in the holder. The, the shield holder has a clip that's going to allow us to attach it to the system. It has a screen which is in a yellow case and it also has a clip that's going to allow us to attach it to the system. And then on the system we have two water temperature sensors. These are the long gray wires. Right? And right next to the screen which is in the I2C port is port P0. That is going to go to our bottom one. Port P1 goes to the top. You can remember that because 0 is below 1, so the bottom is below the top layer. And you have an LED strip in the last remaining one. And all we have to do to get this attached is we take it over to our system and the clip can be attached right to our system. And you might have to pull the clips a little bit apart to get them attached tightly but we want this to be a nice firm fit and I'm going to attach my screen and you can attach this anywhere on the system that you would like. I like to have the water temperature one here on the bottom part and then the air one that we're going to do next will be attached to the top. And I'm going to put my screen right down here on the very bottom or you can put it right above it. Okay. Now let's install our water temperature sensors. So how we're going to do that is make sure that you get the right sensor and the right one. And again, remember the bottom one is the one that's going to have the pink dot and it's in port P0. So you can just take it and you can slide it right through the same hole that you did the air tube. And you can push it all the way in if you want to just get rid of all the gray wire. Uh, so the wire is waterproof. And same thing, same rule for the top. Same, just slide it right into our same hole as the air tube and just feed it on. Okay. Perfect. All right. Now our last thing that we have to connect up to is our LED strip. And what I like to do for the bottom one is I like to just bring it down to the side and we have twisty them or twisty ties that are included in the system and you can just simply stretch this out across the system and twisty tie it on the ends or twisty tie it wherever you want and if you want to kind of double dip a little bit on the twisty tie you can also tie some of the cables together with the LED strip. The goal is just that you don't want the LED strip you know, uh, falling off and being stepped on, falling into the water, even though it is waterproof. So now let's install our last bit of electronics. We're going to now install a microbit circuit that's going to monitor our air temperature and our humidity. 
it's going to use that data to turn an on and off fans to help us control the temperature and humidity and also get air circulating over the plants. So what this microbit circuit consists of is it consists of our Grove Shield. It's going to have our microbit. Again, remember the microbit is the brains of our operation and it just plugs right in. It's what has the program that's going to help collect the data. You have a new component, which is a temperature sensor. It is in the orange casing, and just like before, everything that is in a case has a clip attached to it, which allows us to fasten it to the system. You have a screen again, so you can see the data as it comes um, off the uh, temperature sensor. You have a relay, which is going to allow you to control and turn on and off the fans based upon what the temperature is or the humidity. And Think of the relay as basically a switch. It either turns them on or it turns them off based upon what data it gets from the temperature sensor. The last thing you're going to have again is an LED strip. And the LED strip really is just there to turn red if something is going wrong. You know, if the temperature is too high, the humidity is too high, it will turn red. Okay. So just like before, we're going to clip on our Grove Shield and we can put it on the top part. My relay, I like to put usually just under that one. Okay. The temperature sensor one can go almost anywhere on the system and I like to have it initially just attached over here on the side. Uh, it has a longer cable, so you could put it up here, you could put it on the side, you could put it down here, you can put it in multiple places on the system. Okay. And that can be worth an experiment to see if your temperature varies throughout the system, and it probably will based on how close you get it to the lights. Okay. Now the screen, I like having the screen just right above our microbit. And that is all the attachments we need, but the one piece that is missing are our fans. Right. And our fans, we've already got them wired up and connected. Again, it goes with, it has a clip attached to it, has a long piece that just screws directly into the clip. So, just like before, it has an elbow piece and then it has a fan holder. And the fan comes pre-wired with a power cable. Okay. And the power cable ends with a male component, which is important because we're going to need a splitter to power the two. So we just clip these guys on. And I'm going to put the top one on the middle bar. And I'm just going to have it where it blows out over the system. The bottom one you can place on the side if you wanted to. And I'm going to just place it down here, close to my light, and have it twist down. Okay. And so I'm going to zoom in just for a second, so you can see the placement of these guys. Alright, so you see my top fan is placed here, so when it comes on it's going to blow air this way. And my bottom one... is placed right here under my light, but it's tilted downward, and so it's going to blow air down over my plant. But again, you can take this off, and you can place it right here on the side again, and have it blow plants right from the, from the side. It's completely your call on how you want to do that. Okay. Now, let's just place my LED strip, and what we're going to do with our LED strip is just like before, where we place the bottom LED strip along the top. What we're going to do here is we're going to place it right along the top. Yeah. So now I have the LED strip right across the top bar and what you will do is just twisty tie it to hold it into place so it won't fall off. Now our next bit that we have to do is you'll notice that we have these alligator clips, one red, one black, and we have a power port for the relay. The relay, again, is what controls the fans. So in your kit, you should have a splitter. 
and it has the male end and then it has two barrel female ends. The male end just plugs directly right into the relay and then it plugs directly into the fans on the other side. So again, the relay again has to be connected to the fans because that's how it turns it on. When the relay is getting power, a little red light will come on the relay and you'll hear a click. That means current's flowing, the fan will be running. Okay. The last thing we need is power. So now we just need to power everything and all the power for the system, particularly for the electronics, comes from a single USB cable. So in your kit, you have a cable. Okay. And you also have a splitter because you have to make sure that you get power to both of your micro bits. And the splitter is just a male to female micro USB. You just, again, just plug it right together. And you plug it into your power. And then we're going to plug both into our growth shields. Both green lights will come on our shield. And then the last thing we need to do is with our alligator clips, you'll see on your Grove shield on the top, you'll see that it has a 3V3, that means 3.3 volts. Take the red alligator clip and just attach it to that, 3.3. And then the red one is attached to ground or zero volts. And what you're doing with this is you're turning your grow shield into a little bit of a mini battery that is a 3.3 volt battery and when the relay comes on it'll allow that power to flow through the relay to flow through the fans. Now we just want to show you how you will transplant your plants. Uh, we'll walk through nutrient solution water in a different video. And you should have cups in your system. These are little grow cups. They fit perfectly into the holes that we laser cut into the acrylic. And you're just going to put the cups in every hole. And you should have seedlings. So I've got some Mizuna seedlings here. And all that you need to do is you just pop in your seedling and just give it a little push right on it. And that's all it takes to plant them. And you're going to do that for every one of your plants. Right. So I've got actually chives growing in that one. And you're just going to fill your system up just like that. One of the things to be careful of is make sure that you have enough water in your reservoir that the bottom of your seedling is hitting the water. If it's not, what will happen is your seedling will dry out and your seedling will die on you. And that's, we don't want that to happen. So then hopefully in a few weeks, your system will begin to look like one of our early systems that we have. This one is just growing lettuce and it's got a couple of chives in there and you will have 28 plants happily growing. <laughs>